I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. After the death of Norman, the motel has been taken over by a new owner who doesn't know what he's let himself in for. Strange things are bound to happen. Bates Motel is a chilling supernatural thriller. It's 27 years later. I, Norman Bates, being of sound mind, knowing the history of that place, I'd be out of there at the first full moon. Bates Motel has come back to life. Look at that crazy. And history will repeat itself. Like most people, they don't go around seeing stuff that's not there. One more time. What are you doing here? One last time. Bates Motel. Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. And this is a PayPal request from Joseph. Uh, thank you so much for that. Thank you to everyone who has requested stuff, whether by joining my Patreon or by requesting stuff directly via my PayPal. Uh, I did it to be for anything, pretty much reviews, re-reviews, commentaries, movie topics, what have you. If you're interested, the PayPal link as well as the link to my Patreon are down below in the info box. If not, no worries. And what he wanted me to talk about, Joseph, was the 1987 TV movie, Bates Motel. Which I reviewed all the Psycho films. I reviewed all five of them. The four of Anthony Perkins, as well as the remake. Uh, the remake is easily the worst one. My favorite is Psycho 2. The first one has grown on me throughout the years. It's grown on me. It's not my favorite Alfred Hitchcock film that goes to The Birds and Rear Window. But I, I can watch and appreciate Psycho, the original, for Anthony Perkins and Janet Lee's performance and the direction of Hitchcock. Psycho 2 is my favorite. I thought the story was the most intriguing, at least to me, where Norman's trying to do the best he can to go the straight and narrow path, but some people won't let things go. Psycho 3, I don't know. I don't hate Psycho 3, but it's... Uh, I just thought it was a step down from Psycho 2. Psycho 4 was interesting. It's a prequel. And seeing Henry Thomas from E.T. play a young Norman Bates was interesting. I mean, truthfully, all four of those Psycho films, I don't really hate them. The remake is garbage. But if you want to hear my thoughts, those reviews are on the channel. But I never did watch and, and review this one. I guess just never thought thought of it now this has nothing to do with the tv show they made many many years after this which deals with a young norman bates i was gonna say norman osborne norman bates and his mom this one for what i understand it was supposed to be a tv show but they're like no we don't want this so they released it as a movie and I can see why, because this fucking sucks ass. It's boring as shit. That's really the big fault of this. It's boring as fucking shit. And how the hell this would work as a TV show? I can only assume what they were trying to do was a Twilight Zone type of TV show. Only each week it would center on the Bates Motel. 
where Bud Court owns it. You have these people played by Lori Petty and Moses Gunn who help him run the place. So it'd be their interactions with whatever weird supernatural event. Because this is an 80, 90 minute movie. But it does feel like two episodes put together. The first episode would be the introduction of Bud Court's character, whose name is Alex West, who he was mentally fucked up. Well, first off, the very first scene, supposed to be 1960, where Norman Bates, not played by Anthony Parker, is played by someone else. And the news guy's reporting. He's being really over the top. And I'm ready for him to go, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Norman Bates has come in and uh, he did this. Well, he's like, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. He did this and he did that. And stay tuned. It's like, what the fuck? Are you doing a goddamn monster truck rally? Or are you doing the news, buddy? This is 1960. Ease up. So, as a little kid, Alex, he was admitted to an asylum for killing his abusive stepfather. And you hear about how he becomes friends with Norman Bates. You see pictures of the two of them on the walls and such. And it's someone else playing Norman Bates. Then it cuts to Norman Bates has passed away. People get his stuff, including Alex, who inherits the Bates Motel. Bud Court, I think he's most famous for the movie Harold and Maude. I don't care for Bud Court's acting in this. I don't know what the hell he's trying to do. Like he's he's meek, he's quiet, but then, uh, hello. I, it's almost as if Eddie Men now, he was going to say, Sir, may I have another glass of pudding? I just... Maybe some people are fine with this performance. To me, it seemed like almost so meek. I just went, go, just, I don't know what it was. This has some lame jokes too. I mean, was this supposed to be scary at all? It seems like a really bad comedy. That's what it does. Very bad, boring comedy. You have a running joke where he's asking people where the base motel is and people keep saying, I'm new here, I'm new here, I'm new here, including he's talking and there's a drive through of a chicken place. Oh, do you know where the base motel? Sorry, sir, we have chicken and we got nee, 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 nee. I swear that's how she sounds. I'm sorry, sir. Sir, I'm new here. Why oh, you don't be new to here? You probably are, based on that voice. If you got near my dick, it would show up and become a teapot. But with that said, this is running joke that doesn't work. Lori Petty, I like Lori Petty. I know Malone of that. I like her in Taint Girl. I like Taint Girl. I liked uh, what was the in the army now. I liked her in that film. This, she wasn't that good. And the first time we see her is in a fucking chicken suit. TZ finds the base motel, he goes in, he looks around, and there's a fucking person in a chicken suit. Chicken suit. It's Lori Petty's character, because A, she works at that chicken place I mentioned before, and B, she just lived there at the base motel because no one else lived there. But why do we have to first see her in a fucking chicken suit? When you have stuff like that, it just makes you go, okay, is this meant to be a comedy or not? What is this meant to be? Like, did the director or the writers or anybody know that Psycho was not a comedy? The Psycho films were not comedies. Do they not realize that? But you don't make a show based on it called Base Motel and treat it like a comedy. So what the fuck are you doing? 
Lori Petty apparently some runaway, and then she decides to help Bud Port. But then even she has her own craziness because she's just a fucking hothead that just goes crazy at the drop of a hat. Like, for example, she makes meatloaf and he says it's good. And she's like, just good? You mean it's not very good? Oh, how about great, huh? Can't say it's great? Get the fuck out of here, lady. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. How about that? Get the fuck out of the fucking... You trespassing. See your ass for trespassing. Get the fuck out. How about that? Fucking just acts like the... The character acts like a bitch. Moses Dunn, he's a guy who... Bud Court hires him to help him around this motel as well as they're trying to get it back into operation again they're digging over here they keep finding bodies including mrs bates which what mrs bates who which mrs bates is that supposed to be because i thought at the end of psycho they found mrs bates in the the, the chair then they at the end of Psycho? So why would Mrs. Bates be... What, someone stole the body and put it in there? I mean, wh why? Whatever. I, I don't think they fucking know. And they don't care. Then they start... I think they find Mr. Bates as well? I'm like, what if they don't find this? Master Bates? So... Uh, Lori Petty being crazy, construction going crazy, keep finding bodies. Bud Court keeps seeing a figure in the house. He keeps seeing stuff like, uh, or he t he talked once in a while to Greg Henry, Greg Henry who was in Slither and Just Before Dawn, and this film I reviewed not too long ago, Payback with Bill Gibson. He's a guy who wants to place bulldozed. You just tell how fucking exciting this movie is by the way I'm describing it, right? So goddamn frightening. If I farted, it would be more scary than this. I've seen scary episodes of Goosebumps. I'm not kidding. I reviewed two episodes of Goosebumps and they were scarier than anything in this fucking thing. And then that's where you start getting to the, the second half of the film, which seems like a different movie. Because the motel opens, this woman comes in, she runs her room, and she's ready to kill herself. Then she starts seeing all these younger people partying. They look like people from the 50s. Including young Jason Bateman. Yes, young Jason Bateman is in this. And they're partying. And then the lady starts to find out that these kids are dead. And this girl that she's been talking to is a younger version, I guess, of herself? No, that's not the case. It seemed like the first, but no, she later admits she is a person who has committed suicide in the 50s. And all of these kids committed suicide in the 50s. And they're pretty much warning her, don't do that. Because if you do it, you don't be like us and you don't be lost. So, no, it wasn't her younger self. It was another lady who committed suicide back then. And pretty much they did her to not commit suicide. She changes her mind. She now has a new epiphany for life. She leaves. So, happy ending. And then the, the closer... Bud Cord sees the person dressed up in the whole motel, the, the mansion, actually, the house, the cycle house, goes in, and you find out it's Great Henry. And a Scooby Doo ending. This is literally a Scooby Doo ending. Take off the mask! It's Great Henry. I guess the movie thought we would think it was Lori Petty. But no. Lori Petty and Bud Cord and them find out it's Great Henry. Because he wanted, I guess, to steer him out, so he did bulldoze the place. Then it ends with Bud Court looking around his motel. You ever, if you ever need a room, come on by. Not sure what you will find, but that's what makes the world go round. I'm like, 
Yeah, it goes around like a fucking toilet because this fucking series went down the fucking drain and never came up again. At least not on this iteration. And I don't blame people. Sorry, that shorts on. It's hot. I don't blame people. Because what are, what are they supposed to get out of this? It barely has anything to do with Psycho. I mean, granted, it's the Psycho house. There's a reference to Norman Bates. But you don't have Norman Bates himself, really. Bud Court does not make a good lead. I'm sorry. At least not in this instance. Lord Petty, just, her tear just came off as a bitch. Just having random Twilight Zone type of stories, but it's just said the base motel because I guess it's a central compound of supernatural energy, I guess. I guess that's what they're trying to do. The Twilight Zone, the Bates motel, and Psycho House in the background. And it's boring. There's nothing steery, nothing suspenseful. It was rather boring. It was a chore to sit through. And I don't know why they thought this was a good idea in the first place. I guess this is around, I mean, years later, you'd have Freddy's Nightmares with Freddy Krueger hosting sometimes in episodes. I barely remember that show. Uh, it's not released officially, so otherwise I'd give it a watch again. Friday the 13th, the series really had nothing to do with it. To the point it should not even been called Friday the 13th, the series. It should have just been called any other fucking thing. Because they had nothing to do with Friday the 13th. You know, they were doing this stuff. I know now they want to do a Hellraiser show. It's like, no, you don't need it. But then they looked at the success that Hannibal and this other stuff had. <sighs> I don't know what else to say. This is I do see why this just low ratings I I'm to be. It's a rather boring, non-eventful, and at times silly. Again, this film acts more like a comedy than a horror film. I guess by intent. Well fuck your intent. I did I just see why someone will look at this and go, nah, not gonna be a TV series. Tough titty. Don't blame them. No one damn bit. I really have nothing good to say about this. Because you don't even really get the psycho music in there. You didn't even have Anthony Perkins. He probably looked at this and said, no, this looks like a shit, so I'm not doing the movie. Can't blame him for it. But yeah. I guess if you're a completist of psycho related stuff. You'll see it. Otherwise, it ain't worth the shit. See you guys later.